Have you ever wondered how we can predict the chance of something happening? Well, that is where the probability comes into picture. From predicting the outcome of a game to understanding the likelihood of events, probability helps us make sense of an uncertain. So please stay tuned, don't go anywhere else, just sit back, relax and enjoy this video. Now let's explore the classical example of probability in our everyday life, the rising and the setting of sun. We all know sun rises from east and sets in the west. But have you ever wondered the probability of this happening? The rising of sun in the east is a natural phenomena that we experience daily. It is a 100% universal fact. But can sun ever rise from west and set in the east? Is it practically possible? I would say it is not. It, there is a 0% chance here. So here we are talking about the probability of any event happening. So probability is simply how likely something is to happen or the likelihood of a random event to occur. We define probability of an event as the number of ways it can happen divided by total number of outcomes. Or in other words, we can say it is the ratio of number of favorable outcomes divided by total number of possible outcomes. Let's say we have this spinning wheel with five different colors. That means five different possible solutions. What is the probability that this stops at one color? Assuming it is green, what is the probability that it will stop at green? It, it will be one over five. We have five different quadrants. That is the probability. Probability ranges from zero to one, where X here denotes an event and P denotes the probability. 0% probability means that it is an impossible event. It will never happen. The event has zero chance of occurring. And if it is 100%, it is a certain event and it will always happen. That is how we say the probability ranges from 0 to 1. It will never exceed 1. It will never come below 0. Best example to understand probability is flipping a coin. So in a single toss of coin, there are two possible outcomes, head or tail. So what is the probability that coin landing on head? It is 50% and again on tail it is 50%. So we use this formula 2 to power n where n denotes the number of coins. So in this case, we have one coin, so it comes to two, and two denotes the possible outcomes. So here we have two, so that is the sample space we are talking about. The sample space is nothing but a set of all the possible outcomes of a random experiment. Now when two coins are tossed, we have had a tail, we get four possible outcomes, or our sample space consists of four, head, tail, 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 head, head, tail, head. This is our sample space, which is four in this case. And when the three coins are tossed, our sample space consists of eight values. So if two fair coins are flipped, what is the probability of getting first case, at least one head, second case, one head and one tail? We'll stick to first case. So we apply the same formula to keep our n. As we know n is the number of fair coins, so we have two fair coins, so to keep our two becomes to total four. So four will be our sample space here, which consists of ht, hh, tt, and th. And the question says at least one head. If you observe in three of them, you will have at least one head, ht, hh, and th. In all these three, you will have at least one head. Now we apply the probability formula, which is like number of ways it can happen divided by total number of outcomes. The number of ways it can happen is three. Again, three of these cases out of four, you can get at least one head. So probability will be three divided by four. Four is the total number of outcomes. The probability comes to 75 here. Now let's take the second case, one head and one tail. Again, we'll have the same sample space, so which is comes to four. Probability formula again will have the same formula, number of ways it can happen divided by total number of outcomes. In this case, number two, we need to have one head and one tail. And this occurs in two cases only, HT and in TH. So number of ways it can happen is in these two cases only. 
so probability of event here would be 2 divided by 4 that comes to be 50 percent now let's take an example of a dice so if two fair dice are thrown what is the probability of getting first case same number on both the dice second case different number on both the dice that means if if i throw two dice if i get four and four on both the dice that means they both are same number and if i get four or six that means both are different number so we'll take the first case same number on both the dice so our sample space consists of 36 here like if you see the pattern if i get one and one one and two so on up to one and six or it could be two or one so on up to six and one so if you do all this you can get up to 36 sample space our interest is if i have same number on both the dice and that comes to be so if we apply the probability formula number of ways it can happen divided by total number of outcomes number of ways it can happen is only in one one if i get one and one on both the dice two and two three and three four and four five and five and six and six so these are the ways in which i can get same number on both the dice which comes to six and total number of ways it can happen is 36 so we apply this formula we get six by 36 which comes to 16.67 now let's take the second case different number on both the dice again we have the sample space which is around 36 here the probability of an event here again we apply same formula number of ways it can happen divided by total number of outcomes now we know that for that we have calculated previously that same number we have six like one 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 two one three one four like but in this case we need to calculate number of ways it can happen which is like different number so total event is 36 but the same number on road dies and only occur in six of the cases so we subtract from overall space so we get 30 and in the bottom total number of ways it can happen is 36 it comes to be 83.33 so that is how this number plus the previous number if you sum it up you get 100 percent now let's take an example of a pack of cad what is the probability of getting four pack of ace second case an ace of heart and third case picking a spade We'll take the first case four pack of ace so what's the probability so let's define a sample space first so sample space consists of 52 cards as you already know we apply the probability formula here number of ways it can happen divided by total number of outcomes so we know we four pack of ace we get only four numbers so in this case we'll apply four divided by 52 52 is total number of outcomes so sample space which comes to 7.69 now second example is ace of heart again our sample space is 52 again probability of event of happening here is so in this case we only have a single card of ace of heart right so probability would be here 1 divided by 52 the probability of picking a ace of heart from a pack of 52 is only 1.92 percent let's take the third case picking a spade so sample space again comes from 2052 probability event is again same formula so in this case picking a spade so that means pack of 13 cards here from a pack of 52 cards so that comes to 25 percent 